Praise the Lord for the resurrection of our Savior. Let's take our hymn. Let's turn to hymn number 34. And let's stand and sing to start our Sunday school hour off. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Lift it up. Lift your voices up with me as we sing hymn number 34. I know that my Redeemer liveth in on the earth again shall stand. as we sing hymn number 34 if you just came in I know that promise never failed the world before it cannot be singing you may be seated Amen. this morning. Brother Mike, could you help Miss Lola in the find the adult classroom there? You'd be seated this morning, and uh, and uh, we'll get uh, into the Word of God, but in just a moment, but let's take up some prayer requests, and uh, just uh, remember, we want to just praise the Lord. We got somewhere in the neighborhood of 23,000 flyers out this month, so our goal was 25. And uh, we were, Pastor Rick and I were talking about it, and he said, like, normally we average about three. So we'll take 23. So uh, that's, a, that's a good number. So we praise the Lord for that. And I'm thankful for all the folks that uh, just took extra time. And, and I'll tell you, sometimes uh, in, the, in the work of the Lord and in the things of the Lord, whether it be our personal life or uh, whether it be just at the church in general, uh, we're just a little ways away from really doing something great for God. You know, we want to, we try to just give, uh, we can't, do, and this is the thing I'm trying to say, is we can't just give God the bare minimum and expect great things, okay? Uh, like, man, I gave, I got, I got, I rushed through my devotions, and I rushed through my visitation, I rushed through all the different things that God desires for us to do, and then we're saying, God, I rushed through all these things, so you got to come through in a big way, right? Uh, and uh, the thing is, we need to make sure that we're making a big deal. We're going to talk about that this evening uh, in, uh, in uh, the sermon, but uh, that uh, the things of God, uh, he kind of felt like they were a big deal, right? Yeah. And uh, we're like, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. No, God hasn't changed. He really expects that the, his, the things that he gives us to do are a big deal to us, right, that, that we make a big deal about them. And so let's just pray. We just want to praise God for that, and I'm thankful for all the, all the participation for that. And, uh, but uh, we, uh, we just want to pray today that God will draw them into himself. Amen. And if we have visitors show up, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, but I had need to be here today, and so did you. And so I'm thankful, Lord, let me be here and uh, just pray that uh, uh, God will do some great things uh, in our service this morning. And uh, in my life, I need God to, to be at work. So I pray, 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 let's pray for that. And then we have program this morning. Let's pray for those who are 
uh, just uh, participating in the program. Uh, always want to just continue to be praying for salvations and revival and, and for the Lord to just be moving and working. Uh, we, need to, we need the Lord to do that. Uh, ladies retreat, if you're not aware, it's coming up. It's just right around the corner. And uh, so uh, we need to get, uh, make sure you're ready for that. If you have any questions, see uh, uh, Miss Angela, Miss Rochelle, any of the deacon's wives. Uh, if you don't have something you're doing or, or you, don't have, you have a question about that, they all should be able to answer any of those questions for you. Let's continue praying for the properties. We have a, we've got confirmation. Our closing date was the 8th. We've already got confirmation of our signing and where and when, what time on that date and all that kind of stuff. But let's just continue to pray that that will just go smoothly and uh, the Lord will uh, close that out for us. And then we have all of our contractors uh, just lined up. Uh, ready to go. Um, all of our, all but one of our panels, I guess, came in this last week, and so uh, the electricians are waiting on one panel. They promised them it would be here by Wednesday, so he said we, we're, our plan is to be in there on, uh, on Wednesday and uh, getting going on uh, the electrical, getting that moving forward. Want to pray for our church plants. Uh, Want to pray for those who are sick and shut in. Uh, Want to pray for uh, uh, the. Uh, the unspokens uh, that might be uh, might be uh, here, and then also a couple specific ones. Miss Carol uh, Rarig having surgery tomorrow, and so let's be in prayer for her. And then the Lansdales uh, are are visiting our missionaries in England, so they're with uh, the Gossmeyers uh, this morning. I think they'll be over at the uh, uh, the Grissoms this evening. So let's be praying for them as they have uh, time over there. All right. Anybody anybody else have a specific prayer request this morning? Yes, Miss Carey. Who? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Okay. We'll be praying for Miss Carey and her work. All right. Amen. Pray for Brother Austin over uh, Grace. Continue to be praying for my dad too. That reminds me of that. Uh, had knee surgery. He's doing doing fine, and uh, he felt like God was very disappointed in him yesterday, not being out knocking doors. I know and. Uh, so, but uh, just pray he can stay down. Uh, that's not something he does well at all. So, uh, he's, uh, he's ready to run already. And so he needs to, uh, just give a little more time. And so just pray he can do that. Anyone else? We, and then be praying. I'll tell you, Grace, we got to be over there. Yes. Last Sunday morning. That was awesome. We had a great time over there Sunday morning and they had, 31. I said 32, but my dad said he's like, no, no, no. He said, uh, brother, we're, brother, um, brother Gallardo was there because he had a friend that lives right around the corner, and he was there. His friend didn't meet him there, but he went there to meet his friend there at church, and uh, he didn't show up. But he, he's like, we're not gonna count brother Gallardo, and I told him that's mean. But uh, anyway, so as a guest, yes, there. But they still had 31 of their their guests. All right, so of their folks, and. Uh, it was uh, a great, and it, it, just to see the, the, they had homeless people there Sunday. Uh, they, had, uh, they had Hispanic people there. They had uh, uh, black folks there. I mean, it was, it was great. It was awesome. In fact, there was, I told my dad, and I hope everybody gets this, t- takes this the right way. We don't do a great job of reaching out to people that don't look like us sometimes. We just don't. We just don't. And uh, I just thought it was awesome. They had, they had six black folks. Black families or family units, but people in their church. I said that might be more than any other independent Baptist church. All the other independent Baptist churches in the metro area were there, and so I just praise the Lord. They're reaching those folks, and 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 they're reaching. Or they're trying to reach everybody. That's who we're supposed to reach. But uh, you know, sometimes we we don't look past past ourselves sometimes. And so I'm just I was I was just blessed. That's why I said Sunday. I looked a little luck, a little bit like heaven over there, and uh, that's good to see that. Amen. So, anyone else? That was a long talk for Austin. It was a long layoff, but pray for Austin. All right. Anyone else? All right. Yes, Brother Marshall. The Dyes family. Okay. Pray for you. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Miss Carrie. Okay. All right, let's be praying for Marcus, and, uh, and uh, he's uh, been, uh, uh, been coming faithfully but has some uh, issues, needs, needs our prayer, and courts and stuff like that still. Yeah, so let's just be praying for him in that. All right, yeah.
Okay. All right. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we'll get into our lesson uh, this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you so much for your love. We thank you that we can, uh, Lord, gather here as on every Sunday to celebrate uh, your resurrection. Uh, Lord, to give you the first and the best. Uh, Lord, as we know you rose on the first day of the week, Lord God, that we come and uh, we are able to be here with you and and, uh, to be able to have you minister by your spirit to us through your word and Lord God, we just pray that you just would help us to, uh, <clears throat> Lord, to um, uh, just to, to uh, lift you up today. We pray you be with our Sunday school classes. And, uh, Lord, if there be anyone here today that would be lost, that the gospel would be clearly presented to them, that they might know the truth. Uh, Lord, we pray that you just would help um, the, uh, with the many needs uh, that are represented here, maybe some unspoken, some for friends, some for family. Uh, Lord, we ask that you just would uh, continue to uh, just to, to help us to look to you and to trust in you in all things. Lord, we pray that you'd be with the needs of our church. God, uh, you, as you always know what things we have need of. And Lord, I pray that we would just by faith, uh, Lord, be obedient in, in the things you've called us to do. Lord, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Find Matthew in chapter number six. And uh, somebody said this morning, are, are, are you teaching on the resurrection? I said, no, we're just right where we have been uh, in, uh, in our Sunday school lessons uh, uh, this morning. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, we, uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter, uh, you know, we went out and bought our kids new clothes. I was reminded why I don't go clothes shopping when I was looking at the prices of boys' shirts. I got three boys. They're all wearing men's sizes now. Shopping is no fun at all, I tell you. And even girls' dresses. I loved taking the girls when they were little to go buy dresses. That was one of my favorite things. That's no fun anymore either. So uh, all the fun has been gone from Easter shopping. Uh, and anyway, uh, but, uh, but we, we, uh, we understand. We, we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday. And we, we, uh, that's why we gather, because Christ rose on the first day of the week. And so... Uh, we uh, and we're not shy to preach about it or teach about it or reference it uh, in all the things we do. So uh, if, if you said I just need to hear about the resurrection, Pastor Rick, he's got a great message here in a minute on the on the resurrection. And uh, so anyway, so Matthew six and uh, look at verse number sixteen, and it says this. More moreover, uh, I forgot my glasses. Moreover, when ye fast. Be not as the hypocrites are, for uh, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Uh, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And, and this is, uh, is so important. We've been pointing this out as we've been going through these, through these. But thou, all right? But thou, when thou fast, uh, uh, fastest, uh, anoint thine head and wash thy face. Uh, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And so we look at this area of fasting, and we begin to talk about fasting and the structure of fasting. We understand uh, that uh, the focus uh, of, that we're looking at here is, is that of uh, needing to make sure that our focus is on us, our focus is on us, not on uh, not on what other people are doing. And I think as the Lord does these uh, different uh, three different areas uh, about almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, He's He's been pointing this out to to His disciples. This is what the Pharisees do, and and this is who He's referencing is the Pharisees. These people that are placating, they're acting, they're trying to play a role. And uh, you can go to Matthew fifteen and twenty three and find out that's that's who He's talking about, the hypocrites. Uh, that he's talking about here uh, are the Pharisees and the scribes and the religious establishment that they're just playing a game. Uh, they're trying to appear unto men to be one thing. Uh, and the reward that they're going to have is that which is given to them of men, that men look at them and they go, ah, they, they, are, they are a good actor. That's their reward. That's the reward, that men would stop and notice how religious they are and how uh, well they practice their religion. That's their reward. I understand, we're not here to try to put on, put on airs. My, my girls wanted me to wear a 
pocket square today because it's Easter, and I'm like, okay. So it matches my time. Thankful, but uh, uh, but but understand that the the point of church is not so that how how good I can look. That's not the point of church. And getting dressed up uh, on uh, on Easter Sunday is not about how good you can look. That's not what that's not what church is about, and not about how everybody notices your new dress or your new tie or your new pocket square or that you got your hair cut. Praise the Lord, you did all those things. That's wonderful. But it's, it's not about l- how you can appear before men. We came here this morning to meet with God. I, I pray that was our, our point, that we got up and, and, and we realized I, I need to go and I need to be in the house of God and I need to meet with the people of God and I need to hear from God and I need to be helped from the Word of God and I need the Spirit of God to move. That's the, that's the point of everything uh, uh, that we do here. And if it gets to be about appearance and it gets to be about uh, uh, what uh, others that are driving by think, I'm telling you, friend, we're, we're off in our view of what we're doing. And, and, and the sad reality is many are off in their view of what, uh, of what God's trying to do. That's why, I'll tell you why, when we talk about praying for our church plants, that's why church planning is difficult. All right, church planning is very difficult because men don't go in there and go, man, that was a great sermon. I'm telling you, the average person doesn't go in and say, that was a great sermon. They go to church and they go, well, they didn't have this and they didn't have that. They, they don't own their own building and they don't have a youth department and they don't have a this and they don't have a that and where's the nursery? And, and, and they're offering all the amenities that all these other churches are instead of just realizing, man, I need to go to a place where I and my family can be fed from the Word of God. I'm telling you, that's the focus of church. That's what religion is about. It's not about all the extras that we add. And I'm, I'm fine with having nice buildings. I'm for that. I think we ought to take care of the things that God's given us. We need to be good stewards of them. But, but friend, if we get to a point to where we realize that our focus is about, uh, uh, about uh, what other people are driving by, think, then, then friend, listen, we are so far off and, and we are fill, filling that role of the Pharisee and the hypocrite uh, uh, very well. And so he gives them these three areas of almsgiving and prayer and fasting. And, and, and Jesus has begun to teach them that, listen, this is about an inward spiritual thing that's going on, not about an outward appearance that you're trying to placate before, before mankind. I, I'm interested, God's interested, and listen, and knows what's going on the inside of you. He absolutely knows what's going on the inside of you. And so we've already talked a little bit about the fasting in scriptures and and uh, uh, we understand the, the command to fast, Leviticus 23 and 27. It was, a, it was on the Day of Atonement. They were to take a fast on the Day of Atonement. It was a, uh, a, a fast that they were to be proclaimed, a 24-hour period. And then Isaiah uh, 58, uh, he talks about that uh, a Day of Atonement there as well. He says, the day of your fast. And, and, and there's some things that they were going through. They were to exact their labors and they were to take... Uh, what they were going to have, and they were supposed to give it away. Uh, the things that they were going to give to themselves, they were supposed to give away to another person. And and uh, they were there was a day of uh, the affliction of the soul. But the they, the Jews had taken that to where they said, "Listen, what we need to do is we need to make sure everybody knows how afflicted we are, right?" Uh, uh, we uh, and that's what it talks about there in in uh, uh, verse number sixteen. Uh, it says. Uh, um, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, right? A sad countenance. And that, that would describe uh, uh, a lot of people a lot of days. Or, I mean, just look down in the dumps. And, and, and I, I understand this, okay? I understand this, that not everybody is going to be on, I mean, is going to be on cloud nine every day of their life. I mean, that's just, that's just not everybody. And that's just a reality. Uh, uh, not everybody's like looking at every day. And I get this, uh, like, man, this is a great opportunity. Some of you don't look at life that way. I, I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, great, another day. Yes, I, and that's me. And, and my wife wakes up and goes, we really have to get out of bed today? I mean, that's, I mean, we really have to go. I mean, she's, I mean it's not 10 o'clock yet, you know. And, and you, you can think I'm mean for saying that. That is 100% true. I'm not uh, uh, she would she would, if she could, she never gets to, but if she could, she would be there, all right. So, uh, but, um but, but, you know, sometimes our, our personalities can be different, and that's, that's, that's one thing. Uh, but uh, I remember a pastor lady one time, and I, I'm telling you, she looked like she ate prunes every, every, every minute of every day. Uh, I, I'm not joking. I mean, it was just like, I mean, like angry. I mean, like, not like, like oh, she just doesn't smile, or she's just kind of melancholy type, you know, not, no expression at all. Like, she walked around looking angry. Like, 
like had a scowl on her face, and she'd walk into church, and and uh, if somebody said something to her, I mean, she would be offended. You know, I'm like, like, but but yet, but yet she she loves God, right? Loves. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, uh, we shouldn't walk around with a sad countenance. Shouldn't walk around with an angry countenance. We shouldn't walk around like people going, oh, don't don't talk to sister so and so. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but here they are trying to act like, oh, I'm, I'm fasting and I'm sacrificing and I'm giving God so much. And, and friend, listen, you're, you, you don't add anything to God. You just don't. And, and, and so they made themselves a sad countenance. Uh, um, uh, they disfigure their faces. And I don't know any way other to look at that other than I, I think of duck lips, girls that, you know, they're taking selfies. And uh, I about, I don't know, I had a kid yesterday, we were in, we were in Burlington Coat Factory looking for clothes, and, and Alex found this nice leather jacket, this uh, bomber jacket, and he fixed his hair, and he's taking this selfie. I'm like, what in the world are you doing? And uh, he, he lived, but anyway, any, so I don't, I'm like, whose home are you being raised in? But um, but they come on, disfigure their faces, and they want people like, oh man, they they must be so hungry. They're starving to death. Their face is, you know, concaving from the lack of food, and and they appear to men to fast. That's that's their goal, is that everybody knows I am sacrificing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody knows what I am doing. Everybody's aware. And, and friend, listen, that is not the fast uh, uh, that the Lord outlines in Scripture. In fact, if you go back to Isaiah. That's the opposite, of, and we don't have time this morning, that's the opposite uh, of what Isaiah desired for them to do. And, and, uh, uh, and the Lord would desire for his disciples uh, 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 to do is that they would cause men to think that they're doing something uh, uh, religious. It's, it's not a matter of nobody can notice that you did something for God. Like if somebody comes up and like, oh, I, you did... You did a great job on that song, or man, that was a great message, or that was a you know uh, uh, a great whatever Sunday school lesson. You know, uh, it's not a matter of people can't go. Man, I I, I needed that. That helped me. Whatever. Uh, it's a matter of getting up and trying to make sure men understand I'm doing this so that I can get a pat on the back, right? And, and when we get that pat on the back, guess what? Just like the hypocrites, there you have your reward. You have your reward. You got exactly what you were looking for. And, and, and in eternity, there is no reward. For eternity, there is no reward. But what we do, whether it's recognized of men or not, uh, uh, listen, our goal and our, our frame of mind and our heart's desire should be that, listen, the God of heaven was glorified. Uh, we lifted him up. He was, he was pleased. He was praised uh, uh, that uh, I could give something to God, that I could offer anything to the Lord. That should be our frame of mind and our desire, and, uh, and we need to learn how to, uh, how to do things the right way. And, and when we talk about fasting the right, uh, uh, the right and wrong of it, uh, uh, there's some people that um, uh, regard uh, it as a necessary uh, religious activity. All right, you have to fast. If you don't fast, and, and I know uh, of Groups and preachers that like uh, we fast, they do forty day fasts, and that's that's between them and the Lord. That's that's wonderful. It's never commanded in Scripture. It's never commanded in Scripture. You say, well, Jesus did it, and we're going to be uh, uh, like Jesus. All right, uh, we are to be like Jesus, but it wasn't a command of Scripture. And and and, uh, and again, it kind of goes back to like, is it about you or is it about Christ? Right, and, and so when you look at others, and anybody looks at others and say you have to do this fast and you have to do it this way, uh, or or you can't be as, as spiritual as I am, or you're never going to be as spiritual as I am until you, uh, friend, listen to me. There's something wrong there. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with their fast, all right, but it is wrong when we start mandating that other people are as spiritual as we are, and probably if we're mandating that others be as spiritual as we are, we're probably not as spiritual as we think we are to begin with. That's just a reality. If you think you're spiritual, uh, then then you probably are not. Probably are not. Uh, the 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 apostle Paul said, "Listen, I'm just I'm the chief of sinners. Uh, there's nothing special. I mean, Paul wasn't out there thinking there was something special uh, about him. And, and then number two, we should not see it merely as a form of discipline. 
It's not a form of discipline. That's, that's not in Scripture again. That's, that's fine. If you want to discipline yourself and you want to diet, that's wonderful. That's good. Most of us need to. Me especially, I need to. Uh, but that's not what fasting uh, is connected to. You, you can connect that if you want, that I'm going to be disciplined and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, cause myself to, uh, my flesh to be afflicted. That, that's okay, that's fine, but it, it's not about dieting. And then number three, this is where we stopped in our lesson last time. We should not fast as a means of obligating God to our wishes. Obligating God to our wishes. God, I want to make sure you see things my way, so I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice and, and expect you to do stuff. Now, I, I believe this. We could take it into another realm. I, I believe if you uh, tithe, okay? I believe if you, if you are obedient with tithing and giving and you give to the Lord uh, uh, that which is His and you're obedient to God as He says, listen, I want you to meet that need or I want you to meet that need, I think God's going to bless you. I absolutely believe God blesses those who, who are honest with Him with their finances. I think God will bless your uh, uh, finances. But, but at the same time, because I gave, that does not mean, that does not mean uh, that I'll never have finance. I'm, I'm never going to go through financial hardship ever. I'm never going to have to wonder how is this going to take get, get take care of. I'm never going to have to. I'm never have to get on my face and pray, Lord God. You know we need new tires. I'm never going to have to pray that prayer because I tithe. All right. Uh, God isn't God isn't obligated to you because you've gone through some religious practice uh, uh, and you're not set to where I never have to go through any kind of any kind of hardship whatsoever because I went through a religious practice. No, the reality is this, you have need of faith. And God's going to put you in places uh, uh, to where you are going to have to exercise your faith. The reality is this, when I've been obedient to God, I can have confidence that God is going to meet my need. But it doesn't absolve me of needing to practice faith. I, I can't. I, can have, I, I don't know how, I don't know where, I don't know when. But God's going to uh, uh, take care. Uh, tires specifically, when we lived in Washington, uh, we, there, uh, we, we, were, uh, we needed tires. And I had, uh, Brother Gary Roby, an older man in the church, when, uh, he's a deacon there in the church. He walked by my tires. He said, Pastor, you need new tires. I said, yeah, well, we'll get them eventually. He said, well, you know what you need to do is you need to go to, over to uh, Gundy's. They were Gundy's. Uh, and he said, go, and he said, and go ask for uh, uh, the, uh, the, the old man uh, that's there. And he said, uh, he, he, his slogan is, he retires pastors. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And, and so, I, so I, I went another week, and he went, and Gary came in. He's like, you didn't go see that guy at Gundy's? I'm like, well, I don't know. And so Gary's like, come on, I'll introduce you. And so we went over to Gundy's, and, and, uh, and uh, we, we walked into Gundy's, and he says, uh, he introduces me to the, uh, to uh, this, I mean, ancient dude. I mean, he's really old, and and uh, he said, uh, he's like, hey, I want you to meet my my pastor. And he's like, oh, you know. And uh, and he said, uh, he said he needs he needs tires. And he said, oh, I mean, that guy just lit up. He's like, oh, I mean, and and he's like, well, come on. He took me out in the yard, and he said, he, he's like, what tie, size tires you need? And he he was just like going through there, and he found the uh, a set of tires and and brought them in. And uh, and uh, his son was trying to. His son's like, uh, he brings him in. He's like, he's a pastor. And he said, these are free. And he said, and so, and I, the whole time I was there, never bought tires. Never bought tires because he likes to retire pastors. And I was okay with that. I'm fine with that. But I, you say, what, what are you saying? I'm just saying God can meet your needs. You say, did that guy ever come to church? Never came to church. Never came to church. Did he ever, I mean, nothing. I, he just, he, he loved to give tires to preachers. And I got preachers' tires and tires. He, any preacher I took in there, any missionary, he would put new tires on their car. That was just how he loved to give. And, and, uh, and understand, listen, he wasn't putting a sign out on the, on the street going, if, you're, if, if I'm doing this because I want everybody to know how... Sp no, no, no. He was just, a, he's just an old man who ran, a, who ran an honest business and wanted to do something great for, the, for, for those who serve the Lord. It's what it, what it was. He wasn't he wasn't advertising it. It was it wasn't like widely known throughout town or anything like that. Uh, but the man desired to be a blessing, and, and so listen. God is not obligated uh, uh, to your wishes. And, and then B, when we talk about the the right and wrong of fasting, uh, uh, verse number sixteen, wrong motives uh, uh, for fasting. We need to be careful of. Uh, this is, this is incredible uh, that grown men, religious men, all right, social leaders. Uh, what they would do to be seen of men. 
the, the links that sometimes people go to so, so people will notice them. Uh, the manufacturer, we talked about the sad countenance. They disfigured their faces. They went unwashed. They soiled their faces, uh, uh, kept unkept hair. Like, oh, man, the, your life is so hard and difficult. Uh, friend, listen, uh, uh, we serve the, uh, the God of creation, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Uh, I'm telling you, on our worst day, it's the worst day we're ever going to have here on this earth. On our worst day. And, and, and we can trust God. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, uh, Wednesday night, it was such a blessing. Um, and uh, I, uh, uh, I came in. I was expecting all day long, uh, all, all day. I got my brother uh, reached out and said, hey, pray. Uh, my brother Caleb, he said, hey, pray for us. Our boss called the whole company in and uh, said everybody's got to be in. He said, usually in construction, that's never a good meeting, you know. And so uh, he said, if you just would pray for us. And so, uh, sure enough, they all went in. Brother Cameron works for, uh, uh, for that company. Brother Ethan uh, Dyes works for uh, that company there. And uh, they got in there, and they, uh, uh, they, they heard uh, the, you know, the John Deere you know, letter you know, speech, you know, like, hey, we're, everybody's laid off, and, and uh, we're closing business, all that kind of stuff. And so, anyway, it was, uh, it was, it, I was thinking, man, I'm going to hear from Cameron. I'm going to hear from Ethan, you know, these guys, they just lost their jobs and, and they're going to be, you know, discouraged and whatnot. Never heard from them all day long. Never, not one, none of them called me. And so then I, I saw Cameron at church on, on Wednesday night. They said, hey, you doing okay? I heard you got laid off. He's like, yeah, I made one phone call and got a $2 raise. So I'm just saying, you don't have to sit around moping. Like, oh, everybody, be like, I. This is what happened to me. This is my plight in life. That I'm, I'm telling you, God, God desires to bless His people, and we ought to live like man. We, we with the faith and knowing, God's going to take care of this. I, I mean, nobody woke up that morning going, "It'd be awesome to get laid off today." No, nobody wakes up with that idea. But, but have faith. God, God wants to take care of you, and, and, and can take care of you. Um, and, and so uh, uh, we need to we need to have a right motive in fasting, and, and then see we have a uh, we need to uh, the right the we need to act right about fasting. Fasting when you believe it is proper response to the prompting of God. That's when you need to fast. When when you feel like man, I, I need to I got some areas in my life. I, honestly, I, I'm yielded to an area that I shouldn't be in my life. I've got a Maybe a stronghold, I feel like, that is getting taken over in my flesh. I need to, I need to spend time to make sure my heart's right with the Lord. I think that's the right time. I think we need to be aware of those things. I think it's okay to fast. I think it's, it, it's just a, a time when you say, like, man, things just, I, I, my, my right walk with the Lord just isn't right. That might be a right time to fast. That might be. Uh, I, I do have a need. Now, I want to I make sure that my, not, not that God, God makes a big change because I did something, but I want to make sure that my prayers are heard on high. That's the right time to fast. Not, not that God has to do something just because I, I want it to happen, uh, uh, but that my heart's right with God. I don't have anything separate between me and the Lord, and I know my prayer's being heard on high, and I know I have a God that can answer it. Again, these are just times to fast, but the time to fast is not a mandate that, that men put upon us, but it, listen, it is a prompting of the Spirit of God that God puts upon us that we might be able to have a right relationship uh, uh, with Him. And when you fast, to do it right, you need to be yourself. That's what you need to be. You need to go about your business uh, about doing the things that you would normally do and, and be well kept. Don't, don't like not take a bath today and comb your hair because I want everybody to know that something's going on. All right? Please take a bath. Put on deodorant. That'd be good. Comb your hair. And, 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 and those are all just right things to do on a normal day. And, 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 and then um, uh, uh, we need to make sure we're, we're, we're uh, listen, uh, uh, that we are doing these things that we might be able to uh, uh, have a right relationship with God. And, and it doesn't matter what you're going through or what your circumstances are in life, whether they be good or bad. Every one of us need to be concerned that we have a right relationship with God and that our, our, our walk with the Lord is what it ought uh, to be. And then three, uh, and we need, to, we need to start getting done, but uh, is fasting the real issue? Is fasting the real issue we've been talking about? Not really. Not really. The, the real issue is not, the, is, that is not. The real issue is God hates Phariseeism. 
God hates Phariseeism. God is not looking for anyone to be an actor. And that's why uh, we've continued as we've been going through these verses, uh, uh, been meticulous to point out like verse number 16. Moreover, when ye fast, God expects you to fast as his, as his disciple. He expects you to fast. I mean, there should be times when you stop and you say, you know, I need to concern myself with my relationship with God. I need to make sure that there's nothing between me and my God. And, and so when you fast, that's something you're supposed to do. And, and again, I'll re reiterate this just in case there's somebody listening online that goes, wait a second. Uh, uh, there are medical conditions that God's aware of. There absolutely is. There are medical conditions uh, uh, that God is aware of. And you be careful if you have a medical condition. I mentioned uh, uh, last time we were on this lesson that, that uh, uh, a couple weeks ago that our son, our son Alex, he's a type 1 diabetic. All right, He cannot uh, uh, have a day of fast. It's, it's something medically he can't do uh, or he will be with his Lord in heaven. All right, uh, and, and so uh, we understand this. Uh, uh, but, but the Lord, listen, at the same time, knows the heart of each and every one of us. The Lord knows your heart. And so when you fast, all right, uh, it says, and then verse 17, but thou. The main focus of this is not what men see, and it's not about what I want and, the, and what I desire. The main focus is my Father in heaven and that I am right with Him. That's the main purpose of, of, of fasting. That's the main purpose of almsgiving. That's the main purpose of prayer, that I am right uh, uh, with Him. And so uh, uh, the Lord does not want to be, us to be uh, uh, focused on, uh, uh, on others. The Lord wants us to be focused on Him and me being right with Him. That's the focus of all the teaching that Christ has given here is that we would be right with Him. The attitude of pride and, and spiritual superiority is, uh, is abominable to God. God doesn't, God's not impressed when you can show yourself to be, well, I, I, I look at all the religious things I've done. Uh, mean, mean nothing to God. That, that attitude means nothing to God. God's desirous that we would be humble before Him and the attitude that I've done something for God. Friend, listen to me. That, that's sickening, I think, to our, to our Lord and Savior, that you've done something for Him. The only reason I've had an opportunity to do anything for God is because what God has done uh, uh, for me. I, I'm not saying it's not pleasing to the Lord, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, you, know the, uh, you walk into your, your kid's bedroom and, and, uh, and they picked up their toys, right? Oh, man, I, I'm probably a mother's heart that would just be so warming and, and, and so thankful they, they picked up their toys. When they turn teenagers, they, they, I mean, it's like pulling teeth. It's, 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 but anyway, but a little kid, you walk in there, I, I made my bed or I picked up my toy or, uh, you know, they did something. And, uh, you know, I, and, you, and then you open the closet door and everything falls out, you know. <laughs> but, but, I mean, they think they've done, you, come on, you ever have that experience where your kid thought, man, I've done something amazing. This is just a great feat, you know. And they're like, okay, well, you should have picked up your toys. I mean, there's no prizes or anything for this, all right. Maybe from a mom, but, you know, the, the, I mean, th there should be no, like, expectation of prizes, right, from a God because we, oh, look what I've done. Now, maybe as a kid, they might get some extra goldfish. I mean, I think that'd be all right. I'd be, I'd be all right. But, but come on, we, we get to that where, like, we're like this little kid that we've done something religious and, oh, God, oh, he's going to do, uh, no, no, he's going to do good things because he's a good God. Because he loves his children, right? I mean, honestly, whether you did that or not, God's still a good God. Amen. He's not obligated. And so we need, we need to keep that in mind, that these are things we ought to do, but not because we uh, are trying to be better than anybody else. We're, we're no better than the Pharisees if we think, man, we've done these things and we're, we're better than anybody. Remember, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the weak. Blessed are the hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. That's, that's what God's looking from each and every one of us. Not that, well, we're better than the church down the road, or we're better than our neighbor, or we're better than the people across the aisle. We, our family this, and our, our, me that. No, 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 no. By the grace of God, we get to serve Him. By the grace of God, He, he, he is so good that He gave me an opportunity to do something for Him. That, that should be our heart's desire. And, and then let's just quickly, let's look at some illustrations. It is, it, 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 we, we understand this, it's right to tithe. 
right? The, the, the almsgiving. It's right to give. But it, if, you flaunt, if you flaunt it and are arrogant and develop a spiritual arrogance of superiority, listen, you, 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 you need to quit tithing. You need to quit. I, I, I'm just telling you, in churches sometimes people, they'll get this, well, I've given more than anybody. So therefore my opinion counts more than anybody. No, no, that, 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 that's not how God works. Did you, did you give an obedience to him? Praise the Lord. Did you give more than anybody else? Well, yes, I did. Well, you ought to thank God for blessing you. <laughs> that, that doesn't give you two votes and everybody else gets one. No, no, no. Uh, you, you need to understand this, that, that God's not looking for you to be, God's looking for you to be obedient. He's not looking for you to lift yourself up because of what you've done. And number two, uh, uh, is it right to go on visitation? Yeah, we should go visit people. Yeah. It'd be true religion would be to go and to help the fatherless, the widows, all those kind of things. I mean, to go visit me. Is it right to teach? Is it right to sing in the choir? Is it right to serve? Of course. But if we develop a class of rank in the body based on visible service, uh, uh, listen, we're just practicing Phariseeism. We're just practicing Phariseeism. Now, now here's the thing, that that, uh, that there are, listen, there are some that can do things better than others. Let's just read. I have abilities. You have abilities. Um, you know, I, there's things I can do and there's things you can do. All right? Uh, but that doesn't mean the thing, oh, the, pastor, the things pastor does, they're, they're better than everybody else. Understand, God can use a mule to talk. Amen. He absolutely can. He proved so in the Old Testament. Uh, I mean, he can use a donkey, he can, he can use me too, right? And if he can use donkey, he can use you too. It's not a matter of class or one's a superior. Uh, each, each and every one of us in the body, we have different roles, we have different uh, things God's given us to do, uh, and, and, and one is not superior to the other. I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm as, uh, 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 just as true as I can be on this. I, I think the, the ladies changing diapers in the nursery uh, are, are gonna. If somebody walks the aisle, I think they've probably got more reward in heaven than I do for preaching. I'm just being honest. I, I don't want to change diapers. I'd much rather be preaching the uh, a sermon. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, uh, the ladies that sit in the nursery, the people that sit in the nursery, and, and they take care of those kids so that the auditorium can be uh, a place where people can concentrate on the preaching of the Word of God. I, I'm telling you, if somebody, somebody makes a decision for Christ, uh, I'm just telling you, I, I'm just of the, this, uh, this opinion. They've got as much reward in heaven before God as, as anything that I do. Anything. Uh, but, but, friend, listen, we can't think of this as a, as a class thing. That's not how God looks at it. Uh, is it right to be separated? Of course. Of course. But, but I'm just telling you, we, we get a lot of our practice and all of our religion, and, I look, and we, we get to this thing of look what I do for God. And we're, and we're wanting other people, not, not, not God to look, we're wanting other people to look and notice what we do for Him, right? And, and, and friend, I, I'm telling you, that's nothing but the attitude of a Pharisee trying to help others to know how religious I am. I, instead of us having this attitude of how good, man, God's so good, God's so great. Why do you do what you do? Because I have a great God. Why do you live this way? Why do you live separated and holy in it? Because He's such a good God, He's such a good God. And then see, we need to realize this. We can do the right things wrong. You can do the right things wrong. Say, well, I do this and I do that. Fantastic. Why do you do them? I'm telling you, God cares why you do what you do. God's not interested in you doing what you do so that, that the neighbors are impressed and that the people in the church are impressed. And I'm telling you, that's a, that's a wrong attitude. You need to make sure that you do the things you do because of the holy God in heaven that has prompted you by His Spirit through His Word to be obedient to Him. That's why you should do what you do. That's why you should do what you do. And, and then in conclusion, the bell rang and i got to be done. The point is that ours is to be a righteousness that emanates from a humble heart devoted to God. That's, that's what God's looking for. Just uh, 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 that, that, that we're humble before God, uh, God saved us who were, who were in our sin, loved us while we were yet sinners, 
gave us opportunity that we might be able to have a home in heaven. And, and friend, listen to me. And, and not only do we have a home in heaven, we get to go and accomplish His work on this earth. Uh, the God of heaven gives me royal uh, 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 commissions to go and do things for Him and for His glory. And, and, and that, listen, it's not about me. I get to represent Him on this earth. And, and, and that should be what, uh, what motivates us, not, not everybody walking by and patting us on the back about how well we've done. Let's have our heads bowed and our eyes closed this morning. We'll uh, uh, get moving on to our uh, uh, next service. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for your goodness, your love. And, and, and Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would help and, and keep us, keep our church, keep every home here from this attitude of Pharisaical uh, uh, ism and this idea of acting and, and, and trying and desiring for men to see us and for men to glorify us and God that you just would help us uh, that Lord we would be desirous that you would be glorified you alone in the things that we do and uh, Lord I pray you just help us that we would be busy about your work for your honor for your glory for your kingdom in Jesus name we pray Amen Alright we uh, now listen this morning it's uh, we already have don't don't, we don't want to make them uncomfortable. We already have guests this morning, all right? And uh, we want them to feel welcome, all right? So let's make sure we're, uh, we, got to, we want to be out uh, uh, greeting folks and uh, make sure that uh, when they come in, uh, if we have a guest that has need of something, we want to make sure they find it and have need of it. Now it's good to have our guests. Let's go greet them, all right? Hey, Brother Mike. Ooh, arise in this world. Let's put that. Uh, do you, yeah, but we need that one for the song, though. So you're going to have to grab one of those other ones. Okay. Well, it is sufficient. Oh, okay, yeah. Today's his eighth birthday? Oh, oh okay. I was like, I didn't realize it was his birthday. Lies a lie. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if I'd apologize. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Right, absolutely. Oh. Yes, sir. Hey, Gregory. Dave was supposed to go out and meet people in the parking lot. Oh, the teenage the teenage boys were out there. They were out there. Keith was with them. Oh, was he? Yeah. Uh, is there somebody he can go with and show them what to do? Yeah. Uh, well, you should just come here. I'll show you. Okay. Thank you. Why don't you permission first? Hey, Pastor. Yeah. Real quick, uh, Brother Ed was saying to me. He says he wants the baptismal light turned off. He says to ask you when you want that done. You want that done oh. when I go up there? Well, it has to be the girls turn it off on their side. I think it only turns off on one side, doesn't it? Yeah, it turns off on that side over there. Yeah. But I, I can yeah. do it as I go up for, for us to sing, or I don't know when it's supposed to turn off. Oh, we'll need to do it. Uh, there he is right there. After the song. Well, no one said I could change, so this might be also a warning. Well, the guys are changing. Morning.
It's definitely, hey, can someone turn my mic off up there? I'll turn it off here. <laughs>